Today, we are going to discuss a second part that deals with this branch, okay, this branch of the flux capacitor right here. All right? Now, when we're talking about values, okay, when we're talking about values, we said that one mole of any gas at STP had a volume of what? Nice and loud, I can hear. 22.4 liters. Okay? 22.4 liters. Now, as I'm doing this, let me propose this question to you. Okay? Let me propose this question to you. How do you calculate density? Justin? Mass over volume. So, density is equal to mass over volume. Right? Now, if I have this density, okay, I know the mass of one mole, don't I? How would I find the mass of one mole of carbon? How would I find that? All right, Shelby. Where, where'd you get that mass at? Let's, let's stop and let's break and let's say, okay, she just told me the mass of carbon, right? Where'd you get it? Periodic table. So have those handy. Periodic table. So, if I can find the molar mass, and I have a gas at STP, I know the molar volume, right? So, I can get the molar density. I can get the molar density. So, if I were dealing with carbon, if I were dealing with carbon, what is the mass of one mole of carbon? Shelby, you said was what? Grams, right? Well, if it's at STP and it's a gas, okay, I know carbon's not a gas, okay, but we're just going to pretend since we're using carbon here. Okay, we'll pretend that we have gaseous carbon, which you don't have. Okay. You know what? Let's let's get out of that. Okay. Let's not use carbon. Let's not use carbon. Let's use something that's a gas. So what is something that is a gas on our periodic table is oxygen. Okay. Now if I have an atom of oxygen, it weighs what? 15.9994 grams is one atom of oxygen. Well, since oxygen's in a gas, and if we have STP, what is the molar volume? 20. 2.4 liters. So that would tell me that the density is what? Fifteen point nine 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 four 
15.9994 divided by 22.4 liters is going to give me 0 0.7 one four. Since I have three sick figs on my twenty two point four right there. What's my label gonna be? Grams per liter. That would be a molar density <laughs> of one atom of oxygen. Now we know that oxygen is a super seven, right? So would we ever find oxygen as by itself? No, it would be a super seven. It would be in a molecule of oxygen. Here is our first example of a density problem. So, I'll give you a second to copy it down. So, the first thing I asked you to do was get the molar mass, uh, excuse me, the molar mass of sulfur dioxide. Okay, somebody give me their value that they calculated for the molar mass of sulfur dioxide. First of all, What's the formula for sulfur dioxide? SO2. Alright. So, density is equal to the molar mass over the molar volume. What is the molar mass of sulfur dioxide? Who wants to give me their value? All right. 64.0638 garlic dulcimer, which is exactly the number that I have. Excellent job. Now, what is my molar volume of sulfur dioxide at STP? My molar volume, 22.4 liters. So, how am I going to calculate that? I'm going to take my molar mass and divide it by my molar volume. And I get my density with three sick figs because 22.4 is three sick figs. I'm going to get 2.86 grams per liter. So basically, all we have to do for this type of a question is calculate the molar mass and use the molar volume. Now, unfortunately, well, this one's the same way. Go ahead, write this down, and calculate the molar mass for dinitrogen trioxide. What value did we get for the molar mass of dinitrogen tri oxide. All right, Chloe. Excellent. Excellent job. So, density equals mass over volume. So we just said that the mass was 76.0116 grams. And STP this gas has a volume of what? 22.4 liters. So my density is equal to the mass divided by the volume 
the 76.0116 divided by 22.4 is going to give me 3.39 grams per liter. Now that's the easy part of the molar density. We're going to find that these next couple problems are just a little bit different. So, go ahead and write down the question and we'll answer it here in a second. Now, if you notice, I've changed this on the slide, people. Instead of the gram formula mass, I put the molar mass, okay? Because the gram formula mass is sometimes used interchangeably with the molar mass if we have an element. So it says, determine the molar mass of a gas at STP that has a density of 0 0.821 grams per liter. Well, I know that D is equal to M over V, right? Can I solve or manipulate this equation find mass. Okay. Do that. What is mass equal to? Mass is equal to what? Density times volume. So I manipulated my equation. Well, what is my density? 0 0.8 to one, and it's grams per liter, I multiply that by the volume. What's the volume? 22.4, because it is a gas at STP, 22.4 liters, so my liters right here cancel, and that's going to give me my final answer in grams was 8 to 1 times 22.4. That gives me with three significant figures 18.4 grams. Get a thumbs up there. Excellent. I want you to write this down. Write this down, then we'll work it. Determine the gram formula mass of a gas at STP that has a density of 951 grams per milliliter. Once again, I'm going to take this gram formula mass, change that to molar mass of the gas. So determine the molar mass of the gas at STP that has a density of 951 grams per milliliter. Now, Something should jump out at you right away with this question. Gram? It's in grams per milliliter and not grams per liter. You need to make sure that you're aware of this because WebAssign does this also. It throws in milliliters at you. 
So, if I'm looking, if I know that I have 20, if I know that I have 22.4 liters, how many milliliters is that? I need to jump my decimal place three spaces to the three spaces to the right. So twenty two point four liters is twenty two thousand four hundred milliliters. Now, just like my last problem, I know that mass is equal to density times volume. My density here is 951 grams per ml. So I know that I need my volume in milliliters, correct? So I multiply that by 22,000. 400 milliliters. My milliliters cancel. My milliliters cancel. So, my final answer is going to be in grams. Take the 951 grams, times it by 22,400. And I get a huge number, correct? Now, that huge number can only have how many sig figs? Three. Okay? Three sig figs. So what I am going to do is I'm going to put it into scientific notation. Okay? My value I get is right here. Two. One, three, zero, two, four, zero, zero. Would you agree with me? Okay, that should be the value you got. Now, in order to make that into three significant figures, I'm going to put it into scientific notation. Now, when I put it into scientific notation, I have to have a number between 1 and 9. So I put my decimal point to give me a number between 1 and 9. Is that a number between 1 and 9? Yeah. Now, how many do I have to jump my decimal point to get it there? One spot, two spot, three spot, four spot, five spot, Seven spots, right? So I jumped my decimal seven spots. So my value is going to be three six fix two point one three times ten to the seven. Because I jumped it seven spots to the left. That is a positive jump. What do you think about that density problem? Yes. Yes. The scientific no qu notation question Carly just asked. I jumped it to the left, and it got positive, to the positive 7. If I'm jumping the decimal to the right, it goes into the negative values. Absolutely. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is the last of the problems I have for density and molar mass. So, you have a WebAssign 5.3 that went active this morning, 
and it's due 12.5.